Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back or if it's your first time to our channel then welcome. So today I'm going to dive right into it so we don't get too long winded. I'm going to be sharing with you guys my vegan body transformation story. So this video has been on the back burner of my brain for quite some time. In fact, probably since shortly after we started our YouTube channel. So I figured it was finally time to come clean with my individual story. And I will link below the story that Dusty and I shared together. But this is specific to me, my experience going plant-based, changing my lifestyle habits for the better, and specific to my body. So it's gonna be tumultuous and there's gonna be a lot of ups and downs that I share with you guys. Everything from yo-yo dieting to overeating and being overweight to under eating and being underweight to getting pregnant and then learning how to cope with postpartum difficulties and getting into the, what I would consider the best shape of my life now. So there are also going to be some photos that I share with you guys that have not been shown on this channel before. So some that I'm actually kind of embarrassed. Even when I look at by myself, I, it just makes me cringe. So please be sensitive. Know that what I'm sharing with you guys today is all very raw. Um, and I hope that it doesn't bring up any like extreme emotions, but it might. But if you could please just be sensitive and know that body shaming is not something that we should do to anybody regardless of what they look like, um, weight, if they're overweight or underweight. So I know that we are all very aware that we shouldn't slander anybody who is overweight, but the same goes for being underweight and everything in between. So keep the comments kind, leave me some love in the comments below, share your success stories, and let's jump right into it. So I'm gonna take it back to high school and kind of take you through up to where I'm at now. In high school, I was a high school athlete, straight A student, top 3% of my class, and I ate fairly healthy because my mom made my brother and I all of our meals. So smoothies, salads, all kinds of healthy dinners, and granted, I was eating a standard American diet, so I wasn't as healthy as I could be, but I was super active and young enough that it didn't really impact me. But when I got to college, freshman year, I was in a dorm room situation where I just had a mini fridge and I had no idea how to cook or take care of myself because my mom seriously did everything for me. So I was a little bit of a fish out of water and with all of my newfound freedom, all I wanted to do was go out with friends and got really into binge drinking and binge eating. So it kind of started to feel like a roller coaster freshman year. And in my dorm room, all I ever had was a little bit of milk, some beef jerky, and ramen noodles. And that was honestly it, you guys. Everything else I would eat out or eat at the cafeterias on campus, which weren't any better. So things really started to escalate really quickly and I developed a lot of severe anxiety and panic attacks and breathing issues and I would wake up in the middle of the night breathless, couldn't catch my breath, and a lot of doctors were saying that it was just panic attack disorder, but it felt to me like I had some kind of rare lung disease, so I got really scared and nervous about that. Um, and I just knew I wasn't treating my body well with the whole yo-yoing, so I decided I was gonna start working out because I figured, okay, I don't feel ready to give up the way that I'm eating because I like to eat pizza on the weekends and fast food and I like to drink with friends and party. So I figured I'm gonna have to start working out to combat that. I was an athlete in high school and I figured, all right, I'll start going to the campus rec. So my roommate and I at the time started exercising and that was like the first time I had stepped on a scale in a I don't know how long and it actually kind of shocked me and scared me that it said what it said um, I'm not going to share numbers with you guys because it varies for everybody based on your height and your build but it wasn't where I knew I should be um, and photos can show that for you guys um, started working out and I got to a place where I was feeling a little bit more confident in my body again and I hadn't really changed what I was eating so it got to a point where I actually was like, okay, I'm not, still not feeling good. So the anxiety was still there, the panic attacks, 
the breathing issues were still there. And on top of that, more scary uh, symptoms began to crop up. So numbness, tingling, serious brain fog all the time, feelings of depression and despair just because I couldn't figure it out and I didn't know where to go. I decided it was time to start eating healthier again. At this point, the plant-based thing hadn't registered. It had never even come across my radar, but I knew that I could be eating healthier. So my diet turned away from so much fast food and processed food and even cafeteria food to, okay, what can I do for myself? I got out of the dorms, I moved into my own condo downtown, and I began to stock my refrigerator. So the bags of spinach, the veggies, the fruits, um, but honestly, you guys, I didn't know what to do with them and they would sit in the refrigerator all week and rot. What I actually ate from my grocery hauls was my Fiber One cereal, Fiber One bars, and Fiber One yogurt, even yogurt. So I became obsessed with fiber because my digestion was seriously in turmoil. I was not going regularly. It would be a couple days between elimination and that just always drove me insane because I felt this direct connection between my mood and going to the bathroom and if I wasn't going I just felt sluggish and lethargic and really frustrated and just again depressed and feeling like I don't know what I can do and it was just always uncomfortable so I became fiber obsessed I would count the grams of fiber in everything that I would eat so I was only eating packaged foods because those were the only ones that showed me my nutrition label so I could count my grams of fiber so the fiber one cereal for breakfast and then I would leave the house go to school go to classes on campus and I'd bring my fiber one bar for a snack and my yogurt for a snack and for lunchtime I would walk back downtown to the sub shop and I'd get a sub sandwich with cold cuts and veggies because I figured that would be fresher than fast food that I was eating before. But looking back on it now, it was honestly just a giant loaf of bread with iceberg lettuce and maybe a couple bell peppers and then cheese and cold cuts on top, which we all know, or maybe we don't all know, but cold cuts are actually considered a carcinogen, so cancer causing. Um, there were times when I experimented being vegetarian with it, but it was just the same sandwich with cheese and minimal veggies. And then for dinner, I was at home in my apartment downtown and I was usually making some kind of lean cuisine, like I had said before. So I liked that you could flip it over, see the calories, see the grams of fiber. So I'd always pick the ones that had the lowest calories and the highest fiber content. And that's what I would eat for dinner. So. I began to pay more and more attention to, to the nutrition labels. So I was exercising and paying attention to nutrition labels, still eating a standard American diet though, not enough fresh produce or anything like that. And I began to be really, really like obsessive about not just the fiber, but the calories, because I was like, so they say that um, your calories in have to be lower than the calories out. So the calories that you burn. So. I began doing spinning classes, working out super hard, running super hard, just being burning on all cylinders as hard as I could. And then I began to slowly restrict calories and lost even more weight to what I would consider I was at this healthy weight. My dad being a physician, I would go in, I got really interested in getting my blood work done and my blood work showed that my cholesterol was going up. My mom and my dad both have histories of heart disease on their sides of the family. Both of them are on cholesterol lowering medications and the nurses said, you might wanna think about doing the same. And that really shook me up because I didn't like the idea of having to be on a medication so young and potentially be on it for the rest of my life in order to improve my health because I had thought that I was being healthy by exercising and lowering my calories, getting in that fiber, but I was actually skinny fat. So I was slim on the outside, but inside my veins and arteries and organs were fat, consumed by cholesterol, which is only found in animal products, not found in plant products. So that really frustrated me and confused me and I couldn't figure out how I could get rid of that cholesterol. I kind of just kept doing what I was doing and graduated college. Dusty and I had gotten together towards the very tail end of college, graduated together, 
and my anxiety was only heightened because I had gotten a degree in biology and decided not to go into medicine like I had kind of in just in the back of my mind intended to do was following the family footsteps and going to medicine so I was kind of left floundering yet again really really anxious about where my future was going and I had no idea and so my mom actually was like have you ever thought about health coaching and it kind of I don't know it tipped my trigger because I had been really interested all of a sudden in fitness and nutrition and I wanted to figure out more so I could solve my own personal problems as far as my blood work goes and I really wanted to improve those numbers again it brings me back to my high school days when I was this perfectionist hard worker who wanted those straight A's and would always find a way to make that happen so now I was doing that with my blood work and so Dusty and I went to a series of conferences across the country to become certified health and lifestyle coaches and they were not in any way shape or form promoting a plant-based diet but the physicians were predominantly I mean you could tell most of them were either plant-based or consuming primarily only plants so the idea mainly of a whole foods diet came into my mind all of a sudden and going plant-based still wasn't there but these doctors were all talking about the benefits of eating whole foods fruits and vegetables nuts seeds legumes you name it these are all whole plant foods and they're full of fiber so as soon as i had heard these physicians keep mentioning this f word fiber of course then the light bulb the aha moment came on that food could be used as medicine so I didn't have to worry about as much about calories, but focus again more on the fiber, but where it was coming from, not so much from these processed packaged foods, but more from these whole plant foods. And it just felt right. It seemed so colorful and life-giving. And at the same time, um, Google being my best friend and my worst enemy, because on one side it was telling me all of these symptoms were going to lead to my ultimate demise. On the other hand, Google became my best friend because I had the door had opened to YouTube and bloggers and people who were living such vibrant colorful lifestyles that began to really truly inspire me to take control of my own health with using food as medicine this completely foreign concept became so exciting and enamoring to me that I knew that this had to be it so Dusty and I thankfully were kind of on the same page and eventually we took it a step further when we went to listen to a doctor speak. So my uncle, who's a cardiologist, had invited us to go listen to a heart doctor speak at a local regional hospital nearby. And we went and listened, and it actually turns out that that person was Dr. Esselstyn. So we were in a room of about 30 to 40 people. He had all kinds of funky plant-based foods that tasted great, but I had never seen or thought of eating before. He showed um, graphs and images that I just couldn't deny. I couldn't look away from being coming from a, a medical background and getting my biology degree. So it all made sense to me and it was just really interesting and Dusty and I decided we would go plant-based for 40 days. So we did it, felt great. After that, went back to our old ways, but we knew there was something to it. So. We decided to go in again, but to really take our time. So to not be so rigid about we have to be black and white. We have to go cold turkey forever. That just really scared me. And I hated the idea of being so restricted and limited, but I really wanted my blood work to improve and I wanted to get better sleep and have my lung breathing issues uh, go away. So that was my ultimate goal was to have all of these scary, weird symptoms, the brain fog, the digestion. I'm like, I don't know I mean I had no choice I had nothing to lose so I went right into it and slowly eventually eliminated everything the meat was easy we never liked to prepare it or cook it the cold cuts were easy to eliminate we would just do our homemade sandwiches at home and do cheese instead of meat and we got a little bit healthier so we weren't eating fast food subs anymore. We were making things at home with our healthy whole grain breads. We were eating more fruits and vegetables and making small spinach salads and soups and stews and figuring things out. And eventually we eliminated the dairy and then the very last thing to go was the eggs. So that's when I actually saw the biggest, most profound difference in my blood work. So 
Like I said before, all plant foods contain fiber and all plant foods contain zero cholesterol. All animal products contain zero fiber and all animal products contain cholesterol. So I was eating only plants, eliminated all the cholesterol. So lots of fiber, no cholesterol, got my blood work done. And I specifically did blood work before and after eliminating eggs because they were my favorite. It was the one animal product out of meat, dairy, and eggs. It was the one that I was having the toughest time giving up. But if my blood work improved, I was willing to do it. Within about three months time, my high cholesterol went to what would be considered by the plant-based physicians to be a heart attack proof range. So that was my A plus, my gold star. I felt like I was in that top 3% of my class again and I felt like I was coming back to the person that I really was at heart that I had lost in college. So I really hated that time in my life and <laughs> I'm mad at myself for that time in my life. And this has seriously changed me for the better, which is why Dusty and I made this channel and do what we do. And it means so much to me. And it's not just about food, but food really is the portal to your ultimate lifestyle overhaul. I did my makeup for this video and I wanted to look cute. And I knew I was somehow going to cry. But I really changed for the better. And I want to get through this because there's more and it's exciting. And it's not just about losing or gaining weight. It's about mental clarity, but not just mental clarity, mental sanity. Especially right now with everything that's going on in this world, mental health is so important. And I was so sick and tired of feeling anxious feeling panicked, feeling stressed and confused and lost. I didn't know who I was and that was the worst part of it. And what I've gained is so much, it's so much, it's worth so much more than everything I had to give up and everything that I lost. So uh, let's keep going. So we were finally completely 100% whole foods plant-based and even to the very extent that we finally went oil free because we had learned from several plant-based physicians including Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. Greger that oil is just a refined fat. So it's a 100% refined fat. It's stripped of all of its fiber and other nutritional constituents. So eat the avocado instead of avocado oil. Eat the olive instead of olive oil. That kind of uh, mentality totally made sense because if you look at it, like this, a spoonful of white refined sugar is a 100% refined carbohydrate. And I wouldn't be slathering that, sprinkling that on all of my food, so why am I slathering my food in 100% refined fat? So that made sense to me. We cut the oil, we did all that. Heart health great, blood work perfect, super exciting, and that's all the motivation it took for me. And my mental health began to improve tremendously. But here's where the downfall came. So I went from overweight to healthy weight to, again, I, had, I still had this addiction to counting the calories and being super rigid about my workouts. And I just almost got, a lot of people have like criticized me in the past on these videos and it really hurts still, saying that I looked too skinny and that I was anorexic or had an eating disorder. And I would never say I had an eating disorder necessarily, as it was more of an, eating order. So I would consider it what is called now orthorexia. So there is a new terminology that just came out a few years ago when this big health trend came about. And it's basically a fear of eating anything that you would deem as unhealthy or unclean. So being just so rigid about everything being whole and pure and so, so like, I really, really wanted to strive for this completely raw foods diet. Um, so raw, nothing was, um, so no cooked food, um, just really, really minimal process and super clean. And on top of that, I was exercising really hard. So I was doing these workout programs that were like 40 day challenges that really, really wreaked havoc on my body. And I began to experience what in hindsight now I would um, label as adrenal fatigue. So it was just really hard for me to get out of bed in the morning. I still wasn't sleeping well. 
Um, while I was, my mental health was improving in one aspect because I felt so proud of myself and I was felt so empowered and healthier. So where this diet or this lifestyle change was helping me, it eventually got to a point where it was kind of hindering me because I was afraid to go out to dinner with family and friends. I was afraid to eat anything that might potentially have something impure or unhealthy in it and I became super addicted to my workouts. So I was very extreme with eating this pristine diet and very extreme with working out super hard and I'd feel super anxious and stressed out and work out extra hard if I did go out to eat or you know anything like that. So it just got really extreme and I did get really underweight but I felt like I was eating enough and I liked to eat food. I was never starving myself. I was just only eating super clean and like I, it just it began to weigh on my mental health like almost too much of a good thing so you can definitely have too much of a good thing and that's what had happened so it was time to recalibrate again so I started over here got over here and it was time to come more to center which is where I feel like I'm at right now so it was probably about our fifth year of marriage and we were homeowners by now and all that stuff and I think I began to relax around that time. So my period was super irregular, which is another video which has been on the back burner of my mind for a long time that I really want to make for you guys is how my period got regular, coming off of hormonal birth control, doing natural methods, all of that. So let me know in the comments below. I know you guys really want to see that video, um, but we'll save that. My period was irregular and I was attributing that to obviously being underweight and over exercising. I never attributed it to diet at all. So I began to think, okay, maybe I need to not do so many of these workout challenge programs and maybe I need to increase my calories or increase my fat. So for my hormonal health and for the fact that we were already in, like I said, like fourth or fifth year of marriage and we weren't like super, super chomping at the bit to have kids, but I did want my period to be regular so that I could, you know, keep track of things if you're trying to do things the natural way and either prevent or um, conceive, you have to be able to have some regularity and consistency so you know what's going on. So I actually reached out to Ellen Fisher, who by the way is one of my favorite YouTubers, and she responded. So I was just so excited and she said, you know, the two most important things would be, you know, not to overexercise and bump up your calories just a little bit, but also more importantly to bump up your fat just a little bit. Maybe bumping calories for from fat up from 10% to maybe 15% or even 20%. So I began to do that and my periods did get a little bit more regular and then lo and behold, I took a pregnancy test and that was in 2000 it was in April no, it was in March of 2018, took a pregnancy test on a whim just because I was like, something's different. And sure enough, I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> so you don't necessarily have to have what everybody would consider a completely, perfectly normal period. So 28 day cycle is not everybody. And that wasn't me. Um, found out I was pregnant. So we are expecting soon we will be blending for three. Shut read, up! Read it out loud. Shut up! Not. Nah. Oh my god! Are you cereal? We're having there a baby! Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh I am so excited. So I think it's safe to say that I was much more nervous and afraid and scared and stressed about being pregnant pregnant than I was excited and elated and overjoyed. I just was all of a sudden having these feelings of being afraid that I was going to gain this weight back and I know that that happens when you're pregnant and that's n natural and normal but I was so afraid of it because like I said I was so ashamed of my past and I never wanted to go back there again so I was all of a sudden afraid of all of these bodily changes and losing control um, over, over my body image again and it made it really difficult for me and really stressful for me to be pregnant for nine months and deal with bodily changes. Um, it just, it got uncomfortable both mentally and physically. It was very taxing on me and somehow I made it through and I don't think it was till until about uh, maybe the uh, seventh or eighth month that I really fully embraced pregnancy and I'm just like, you know what, this baby is coming and I'm excited 
and my body is it's it's beautiful you know this is what I was designed to do and so we birthed a beautiful baby boy it was a surprise we waited to find out and literally everything just changed in an instant like it was so bizarre to me I just had heard so many beautiful stories and they never really resonated with me I didn't believe it I was like oh that's just a cliche that's what people have to say but my instincts kicked in overnight and I was just so excited about being a mom the breastfeeding was working out and that's what I want to tell you guys next is that if you are pregnant or wanting to become pregnant and you're scared like me about the bodily changes that occur breastfeeding is the most beautiful and natural and nourishing thing for your baby and for you as a mom as well and it really helps to kick my body back into shape so it takes about 500 extra calories to produce breast milk every day and feed your baby so i spent about six weeks of downtime which i was so nervous about I was extremely hungry while I was breastfeeding and I wasn't exercising and I had been so nervous while, while I was pregnant that those six weeks of, you know, downtime that doctors and OBGYNs and midwives tell you to take, I was so afraid that I was going to go store crazy and be so scared without my workouts and it wasn't the case at all. It was a beautiful time of healing and relaxation and just really just, I felt my most glowing then to be honest and my body didn't change a whole lot um, so I think what helped most was the breastfeeding and just still nourishing my body with what it was needing and wanting so really being more in tune since I was eating so clean I was able to know exactly what my body was wanting and after the six weeks I began to think about weight training so I had always been a cardioholic again going back to the intense workout programs and just being an avid runner and cyclist and I still love those things but I began to feel like I wanted to show people that I could be strong and healthy so over the past year and a half now I found balance yet again so my brother helped me with weight training and helped me to figure out how to incorporate a little bit more protein from plants into my diet. We began consuming more tofu as long as it's organic, minimally processed soy is completely healthy for you. Um, a little bit more grains and beans and cooked things throughout the day and at dinner time. So I still pretty much adhere to raw till four being meaning that I eat raw foods throughout the day and more cooked foods at dinner time. I still adhere to that, but I do eat more plant protein than I used to. I can safely say that. I'm still a high carb, low fat, plant-based eater, but I do eat I do try to pay more attention to protein and iron now. So going from all of the hyper workouts to the cardio workouts to pregnancy and not working out at all again and making it through all of that going through about a solid year of not really running as my pelvic floor recovered and all of that and I got really into weightlifting I definitely saw results now I am five foot eight so I am long and lanky and lean by nature and you kind of have to go with what you've been given as far as body type so it doesn't matter how hard I lift I'm never gonna be like super bulging and beastly but I am actually really happy with where my body is at right now as far as being super lean and toned but not but not sickly skinny and looking malnourished or underweight like I feel like I did looking back at photos those photos are still really hard for me to look at maybe even more so than some of the overweight drunken debauchery photos from college I think the ones that are the most difficult for me to look at are the ones where I look severely malnourished even though I was nourished, I just feel like I didn't have that strength. And being a mom, I had this newfound purpose in life and I just really wanted nothing more than to be this strong woman. So I just wanted to feel more empowered and more self-confident and it really, really helped. So now I'm at a good place and I'll, I'll link this video below. It's actually walking you guys through what seven days of working out looks like for me. So incorporating both cardio and resistance training into my daily workouts and what that looks like. So I will link that below. And I, like I said, I just feel like I'm in the best place right now. And I'm so proud of myself for the journey that I've been on, even though the shadows in my past are really, really difficult at times. 
sometimes I feel like I've come to terms with all of it and sometimes I still feel like it just eats me up inside and really gets to me so there's good days and bad days so I can tell you guys that when I was eating lean cuisines and processed packaged foods and sub sandwiches and fiber one cereal and bars and yogurt I was eating a strict 1500 calories a day and I was pretty good about adhering to that now while I'm not calorie obsessed I am calorie conscious because I've educated myself with the help of a helpful app called chronometer I'll link it below being calorie conscious means I'm aware how many calories are in a banana how many calories are in a cup of brown rice etc etc so now I eat upwards of 3000 calories a day so I am still breastfeeding but not nearly as much as I was in the beginning when Max was young, now he's 18 months. So going from 1500 calories a day to 3000 calories a day and weighing the exact same. So standard American diet in college, eating what I thought was clean and healthy when I began to exercise and pay attention to calories, 1500 a day to now 3000 calories a day, high carb, also paying attention to that protein. I'm not hyper exercising. I'm not being lazy sitting on the couch, but I'm right where I want to be in the sweet spot of lifting weights, going for runs, doing workout videos, bouncing around, and enjoying all of it thoroughly. So a calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie. So there are three reasons why a calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie. Number one is fiber. So the fiber one cereal wasn't the same as a whole food plant fiber. And I was also eating a lot of animal products which are devoid of fiber. So. Fiber is the number one reason. When you're eating fiber rich foods, your digestion is going to be moving at a much more steady pace, at a higher pace, because those foods are moving through your system. Both soluble and insoluble fiber are going to keep things healthy and clean and clear, and your body isn't going to hang on to those heavy calories as much. So fiber is the number one reason. Number two is metabolism. Your metabolism is going to be boosted when you're eating super clean and pure whole plant foods because your cells, your mitochondria, everything is going to be functioning at an optimal rate. So when things are sped up, your metabolism is going to speed up as well. And the third reason is carbohydrate fuel. Carbohydrates are your body's preferred fuel source. So when you're eating a high carb whole food plant-based diet, you're giving your body the optimal calories to burn and use as opposed to keep and store away like fat. So trust me on this, you can eat high carb, you can eat all of these beautiful plant foods in abundance and not worry so much about your weight. If I can give you one piece of advice, it's patience. Patience, persistence, practice, perseverance. <laughs> so I guess that's four things. But honestly, if you are wanting to go plant-based, the best way is slow and steady. If you wanna lose healthy, sustainable weight, you have to go slow and steady. And if you wanna gain weight, the same holds true for that. Slow and steady always wins the race. So for me, bumping up my calories just a little bit, and it definitely took time because I felt like I was so emaciated. It definitely took time to build back my hormones and to build back my muscle strength and definition. The first step was to shift my mindset. I knew that I didn't have to over-exercise to stay slim, and I knew that I didn't have to worry so much about the calories anymore as long as I was eating whole foods plant-based. So these fiber-rich, water-rich, High density, low calorie foods are 100% the way to go. They're going to fill your stomach up as opposed to looking at eating a high fat meal that barely fills your stomach up. You're going to feel full and satiated, not just by the density, but also by the nutrient density. So what's inside of these? Your body is going to be extracting all of these nutrients that it needs and craves that when you're just eating these greasy foods that are devoid of those, you're going to constantly feel hungry, 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 because your body might be getting food, but it's not getting fuel. So nutrient dense and water dense fiber rich foods are definitely the way to go especially if you like to eat so hope you guys enjoyed this kind of overview of my body i'm going to tell you real quick what i eat now if it hasn't already been evident from my what i eat in a day videos so i usually start every morning with a big tall green smoothie or lately i've been juicing green juices a lot and if I do a green juice, I'll usually have like a pink berry smoothie bowl with it. Throughout the day, I eat lots of fruit. So like I said, high raw throughout the day with cooked foods at dinner time. 
So healthy smoothies, I have a plant protein, I love Sun Warrior, I'll link it below with a discount. So I do incorporate plant, pro plant protein because I'm lifting heavy weights and exercising. And then I'll usually in the afternoons have some, either have like overnight oats or I'll have more fruit. So juices, smoothies, fresh fruits throughout the day. And then dinner time is usually a beautiful raw rainbow salad topped with avocado, coconut aminos, tahini, lemon, lime, all that kind of good stuff. Lots of rainbow veggies on there. And then a cooked meal. So we eat a lot of Buddha bowls. So I always, always, always have sweet potatoes every single night with dinner somehow, some way, shape or form, whether it's a soup or a stew or a Buddha bowl. So what a Buddha bowl looks like is usually brown rice or quinoa, black beans or chickpeas, sweet potatoes. Um, sometimes we'll have like a cashew cream if I feel like I need a little extra fat for that day and I put some salt and pepper and nutritional yeast and call it a day. So like I said, that usually takes me up to about 3000 calories a day. I'm at a very healthy weight. I feel like the weight training helped me a ton and I'm feeling better than ever, not being calorie obsessed, fiber grams obsessed and being whole food plant-based has seriously changed my life. Got a little bit emotional. I had a feeling that I might, <laughs> but it feels really good to let you guys in on my vegan body transformation story. I hope you can take something from this. If you're inspired or moved by it, let me know in the comments below what really resonated with you. If you know someone who might be inspired or moved by my story, please share this video. It would mean the world to me. Also, if you could give this video a thumbs up, that really helps our channel out, letting us know what kind of content you want to see more of. I liked really getting nitty gritty and sharing with you guys, so I hope you enjoyed it too. It feels good to just get that off of my chest and I feel like you guys can know me a little bit better and where I've come from and what I've gone through. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And we would love to have you join the Eat, Move, Rest fam. So until next time, Eat, Move, Rest your best. Love you guys. Peace. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzics. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.